So now I believe we're going to be getting the dog whistle. I think there's three zombies up here, isn't there? Yeah, there might be. I don't fucking believe this! If this gameplay continues like this, I'm going to have to just stop playing. Um, <laughs> the gameplay has to be of a certain standard for me to upload. I can't just upload a really shitty playthrough. There's not going to be any speedrun strats, it's not going to be any A rank shit. Not that there are any ranks on this game, but with a game like this, I should be of a decent quality. There needs to be a certain standard. And early on here, I'm just quite simply not meeting it. But it's so hard for me to talk and play games. I don't understand people who play games incredibly well. Uh, and don't miss a step whilst doing so, whilst commentating, you know. It's so very difficult for a hell of a lot of people, actually. Uh, but people who don't stream or record videos don't really understand this. Uh, Duke that motherfucker. Now, I think there are only two more doors which are to be unlocked with the sword key. But Barry is going to give Barry. us a present here, I do believe. Jill, got any good news? Other than I'm still alive in this madhouse? No. Can't say it's much safer here either. We'd better secure our escape route first. There's got to be a back door somewhere. All right then, let's split up again. Hey, hold on a sec. Look what I've found. What? A can of fizz. It's sure to yellow and mellow those things. It's yours. Hopefully you won't have to use it. The acid shell. What about you? Oh, don't worry. I like the buddy system we have here. I see. Thanks. I'll take it. See you later. Ciao. So we get the acid runes before we get the grenade launcher. I think it's pretty much the same as it was in the original game, really. So there's only one more usage of the sword key now. There's a lock pick. And we are going to go out on the balcony and blow that motherfucking whistle. Probably going to have to blast the shotgun here because if you don't have the shotgun here then it's uh, difficult to kill these dogs without taking a bit of damage because... <laughs> right, okay, sure. Yeah, okay. Okay. So we didn't take damage, but we had to use the dagger. So yet more shambolic gameplay there. But these dogs, when they're running at you like this, are very difficult. They're more difficult to handle than the old school dogs on 2, 3 and Code Veronica, for example. But they don't always attack you, attack you from the off. Sometimes they're just wandering about. If you get too close to them, they'll attack you. But these dogs in particular... Uh, ready to attack you straight away because obviously one's got the collar so it's a kind of on rails section where the game attacks you if you will just going to unlock this door here because on the original this balcony doesn't exist and it's really cool that they put it in the remake actually bit of a shortcut if you will and now we can discard that dog whistle also so now I've got that imitation of a key. Just wondering if I should go straight there. Yeah, I'm going to have to, and I will.
one of these motherfuckers coming up the stairs. I'm guessing that door was locked from the other side. We have unlocked it now. Good stuff. Surprise, motherfucker. And that's the first Crimson Head of the game. That's the introduction. I don't believe there can be another Crimson Head before that guy. That's basically the Crimson Head tutorial, if you will, or the introduction. So there's the armor key. So that Crimson Head's going to be wandering about the place now. They don't go through doors, but they're tricky. I can usually avoid that particular guy, though. There are some zombies which are easier to avoid than others. Including that guy, because he's got a turn to get you. But now, as you can see, we've got another one in the place. Nine times out of ten, zombies on stairs are really easy to avoid, because they only puke on you on stairs, so it's a little bit of an exploit if you're wanting to avoid zombies as well. Lure them onto stairs and do it that way. It's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, should be up yet. See if this guy is one we can avoid. No. So he's not a leaper. Use a lockpick. There might be something useful in here. I think there's some kerosene and ink ribbons as well. But there might well be a defensive item, I think, possibly. Oh, yeah, battery pack. key for the first time as well. The armor key, probably the key you use more than any of the others. Another battery pack. A few zombies tapping on the windows there. And I do believe here, when you put the chemical in, if you don't click red and you click green, then the herbs that are in this room next to the plant will be destroyed instead of the actual, uh, yeah, the tentacles of the plant, whatever the hell it is. I never knew that, but, uh, yeah, be careful not to put it on green, because obviously, a lot of herbs here. Now, it shows that my health is on fine. But on these classic resi games, your health is basically a percentage, if you will. Let's say from fine, it's 100% to 80%. And if it goes to 80, or below 80, I should say, it goes to caution. For example, this is my own system I'm making up. Well, what I'm saying here is my health could only be now at 85%. When I use this green herb, it gets it up to 100. That might not be the case, but I've take, if I've taken damage and I'm still on fine then my health isn't at the best it could be. So that's why sometimes it is beneficial to just use a herb even if you're on fine. Thinking what I'm going to do with these herbs, actually. I might have to just quickly go to the uh, inventory box again. You don't really need to make too many triple herbs. In fact, I could and probably should have made two double herbs there instead, but there'll be a red herb that I combine that green with later, so it'll, it'll be fine. And there is a death mask. 
of which there are four in the game. And this is one without eyes. I might have to shotgun this guy. I think I will, you know. You won't always get a, a headshot with a shotgun. But right up close, aiming up like that, you usually get them. But not always. And of course, if you get one, you don't have to worry about them becoming a crimson head later on. So, that's really cool. Now we'll put this in uh, here as well. Trying to think of where I should be going now. There are a hell of a lot of options as to where I can go, to be honest, right now. I tend not to go into that door on the right hand side. Guy's not leaping. He's gonna have to go. And it's a complete waste of ammo. But if I'd have used the dagger, I'd have still had to use the shotgun on him. After that, at least once. There's the last usage of the sword key. But that guy is going to become a Crimson Head now. It's a big problem. I don't know why I'm going in here. I thought I already didn't, but I did. This is usually the last door I go in before getting a last uh, death mask. But yeah, being in that particular position where he's at now is pretty much terrible. Good stuff. Got one shotgun left on the shotgun shell. I think we will go over here and use the mansion key, the armor key, and get the grenade launcher. Now, this is where the grenade launcher is, I think, on the original game as well. But, even though it's in the same location of the mansion, the same door, this area looks completely different. And you've still got forest here. Although we sat down on a chair now. But I'm not going to go down to there, because there are two herbs there, but if you do so, Joseph will... Attack yet. There's another defensive item. Lovely. How terrible the gameplay has been so far. I'm going to need them. But yeah, Joseph will attack you. And... It's just going to be more wasted ammo. Or another usage of a defensive item. So I've got enough health in the box. So I should be fine with that. And now there are tons of armour. There were usages here. I tend to use the one where Richard is last. You've got to go back and use a serum. Like, I could go through here now and go back and get the serum for him straight away. I might do that. I usually tend to leave it to last, but I might do it straight away here. I mean, I can't fight the snake as it is, to be honest with you. Um...
So yeah, we will do that. I don't usually do it this way. Richard! What happened? You're wounded! This whole place is a killing zone. There are monsters. What did this to you? A big snake. And it had to be poisonous. Poisonous? Richard, hold on. Bring me serum. I saw some, but didn't bring any. I'll go and get it, okay? You're gonna make it. Thanks. So now we've got a bit of, do a bit of on rails backtracking. I mean, the thing is, if I don't get this serum and he dies, it doesn't make much of a difference. Of course, in the original, um, it doesn't make a difference at all because Richard dies regardless of where you get the serum. So they changed it in the remake. It's quite interesting. He will live if you save him in time. But then he'll die later at a different point. <laughs> but if you keep him alive, you will have the ability to get his assault shotgun later on. I can't remember how it works exactly. But I don't usually take the assault shotgun. I must be in the minority, but I'm, I don't like it that much. I don't like how you aim it either. But for the intents and purposes of this playthrough, and the story and the lore of the game, we will get the serum. And I think I'm also going to put the grenade launcher in the box as well. Grenade launch is pretty great on this game. It's called the bazooka in the original. Okay. Turns out he's not leaping. This makes things very difficult for me. But with a bit of backtracking, we've bypassed them without taking any damage, which is good. But I think that's one of the reasons why, all this, though this game is great, that's the main problem I have with it. The fact that the game punishes you for shooting zombies by creating the Crimson Heads. And the Crimson Heads are pretty cool. But sometimes they annoy me. Here, Richard. I'm going to give you a shot. Hang in there. Jill, here's my radio. Take it. I'm... <sighs> Does it ever not hurt? <laughs> there he is. I have a bizarre cutscene, but he's still alive. I'm just going to take a green herb in case I need it. But for now, let's get some more death masks. That motherfucker was just going to leap, but he didn't get there in time. And we've got the night puzzle now. bit different than it was in the original. I don't know if this is the fastest way of doing it, but this is the way I usually do it. Bottom right first, and then bottom left. And the top
top right. And the bottom left. And then finally the top, uh, so the bottom right. I think that might be a long way around it, but it works for me. There might be a way you can do it quicker, but who cares? And for doing that, we get the jewelry box. And what's inside the very lovely jewelry? Jewelry. Why? It's a death mask. Lovely. And this is the one with her eyes, nose, or mouth. So that's the second one. I think two or three more doors and we will be able to discard the armor key. Oh shit, the bed. Okay, this guy's a leaper, that's good. And it's always a... Oh, he's not a leaper. Yeah. It's one of the problems of the game, unfortunately. It really is, you know. It's a problem. It's a real problem. And it stops this from being my favourite Resident Evil game. The zombies and the shooting mechanics. I'm going to use my handgun for the first time here. Really frustrating. I don't know how to get around the zombies that don't leap at you. When you shoot them, they become crimson heads, so... It's not good. Those zombies that turn like that, they're really easy to avoid. As are those. But they don't all leap. I didn't take damage there, did I? No, I used the defensive item, so I'm still fine. Uh, I've got two inventory spaces left. There's more health in here as well, but I don't think I'm going to take it. And there's a red herb, which I might be able to combine with the green. Lovely. That's good. And as I think you can tell, really, in terms of ammo and health, I'm doing fine. It's just that it only takes a couple of hits or more on this game for you to be close to death. Ah. Jill. Barry, I didn't mean to get you that excited. Right. Anyway, you should read this. Researchers will. Some of the uh, well, the documents in this right game are very good. Quite and famous by now. Away with understatements. Especially itchy and tasty. Where's the part that's torn off? Well, my only guess is that it was the most important part, and somebody didn't want anyone to see it. Let's continue our investigation. one do I get now? Is it this? No, I don't think it is. Because as you can see, I've only got one uh, inventory slot left. That go the I usually get these in the wrong spot. Let's see. Ah, there we go. And it's the old wind crest. And here's a buzzing bee. So in the first game, you had to get four crests to proceed to the courtyard area. In this game, they've been replaced by the death masks, of course, but we still do get all four crests. It's just that they're for something else, ladies and gentlemen.